Well, good evening. Welcome to the May edition of Sky Views, brought to you by the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium. I'm Bill Murray, Planetarium Technician at the Planetarium. Let's take a look at some of the interesting sites visible in our May skies this year. Well, the first interesting site occurs early in the month and right after sunset. So right now we're looking towards the west on the evening of May 2nd. It's about 9 p.m., uh, just as the last bit of twilight is beginning to fade from our evening skies. And uh, a few months ago during the winter, we talked about many of the winter constellations. Uh, we can see them now very low on the west. They're beginning to set and will not reappear until next winter. Uh, but they do have a few sites to show us before they disappear for good during the summer months. So if you take a look right above the western horizon, you'll see the constellation of Taurus, the bull, which is easily recognizable by its V-shaped asterism, a group of stars called the Hyades, that's a star cluster, uh, lit up by its brightest star, Aldebaran, marking the bull's eye. And this evening, just to the right of Aldebaran, we have the crescent moon, uh, which should be easily visible if you have a good low western horizon. But in addition to the moon, uh, a little bit um, below and to the right of it, we have the planet Mercury. Of all the planets that we can see in our solar system, Mercury is probably the toughest planet to view uh, because it's never really that bright and it never very varies very far from the sun. Um, so it's either very early in the morning sky or very early in the evening sky. Uh, and this is the best apparition of Mercury this year, but you do need a good low horizon to be able to see it. And then below Mercury is the bright star cluster M45, the Pleiades. So in a line in our evening skies, we have the crescent moon, the planet Mercury, and the star cluster, the Pleiades, although you may need a pair of binoculars in order to be able to see the Pleiades uh, with the bright sky in the early evening. Well, we've now transitioned forward in time to the evening of May 15th. It's about 10.30, uh, and we're looking towards the southeast. And just as the winter constellations were setting in the west, the summer constellations are now starting to rise in the east, so we see the kind of dim and obscure constellation of Libra, the scales, just above the eastern horizon, and below it the much brighter and more familiar constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion. Uh, but both of those constellations will be drowned out early this evening uh, by the full moon. You can see the moon in our uh, diagram here in the constellation of Libra. And if you're out on the evening of the 15th, about 10.30 p.m., and take a look at the moon, it may look a little bit strange to you. And that's because we're going to be treated to a very deep total eclipse of the moon that evening. We talked about lunar eclipses in last November's edition of Sky Views, uh, when here in New Jersey we got to see a very deep partial eclipse of the moon. Uh, very early on a cold November morning. The reason why lunar eclipses occur is because the moon in its orbit around the Earth sometimes moves through the Earth's shadow. And so we get to see over the span of several hours the moon gradually disappearing into the Earth's shadow and then finally immersed in it. Over the course of several hours, starting uh, late on the evening of Sunday, May 15th, uh, the moon will gradually move into the darker part of the Earth's shadow, called the umbra, and will begin to slowly disappear. And then finally, when it completely enters the umbra, it may appear to be very reddish uh, or dark gray. Um, most of the time it's reddish. Uh, it will stay that way for about an hour or so, and then over the course of several more hours on the morning of May 16th, uh, move out of the umbra and gradually become bright and completely visible again. The reason why the moon appears red during a total lunar eclipse is very interesting. 
Uh, although the Earth's umbra is much larger than the apparent size of the moon out of the distance of the moon, so the moon does get completely immersed in the umbra for over an hour, uh, the umbra is not completely dark. And the reason why is sunlight gets refracted by the Earth's atmosphere uh, into the umbra and appears uh, reddish light, uh, which ends up uh, reflecting off the surface of the moon. Essentially, if you were an astronaut who was standing on the moon during a total lunar eclipse and were looking at the Earth, you would see the Earth surrounded by a circle of red light. Essentially, what you're doing is seeing sunrise and sunset at every point on the Earth at the same time during a lunar eclipse. If you're interested in observing uh, the lunar eclipse this May, here are the times you need to be aware of. Uh, shown are the positions of the moon relative to the Earth's umbra starting on the evening of May 15th and continuing on to the morning of the 16th. So the partial eclipse phase, when the moon uh, begins to enter the umbra, occurs at 10.28 p.m. on the 15th. The total eclipse phase, when the moon is completely inside the umbra, begins at 11.29 p.m. on the 15th. Mid-eclipse is 12.12 12 a.m. on the morning of the 16th. The total eclipse phase ends at 12.54 a.m. on the morning of the 16th. And if you can stay up that late, the partial eclipse ends completely at 1.56 a.m. on the morning of the 16th. As a final treat this month, for those of you who are early risers, uh, we've now transitioned forward in time again. Well, this is the morning of May 29th. It's about 4.20 uh, on that early morning. And we're looking towards the southeast. And we can now see some of the constellations that we talked about last fall beginning to rise again, uh, beginning their apparitions for this year. They'll be again prominent in our evening skies next fall. Uh, but that's not what we're going to talk about. If you look low in the eastern horizon, you'll see two very bright objects, uh, the planets Jupiter and the planets Mars, having a very close conjunction on the morning of the 29th. The two planets will be separated by only about a half a degree in our evening skies. That's about the apparent width of the full moon. And uh, you can definitely see them in a good pair of binoculars or a small telescope, which will also easily show you the color differences between the two planets. Uh, Jupiter definitely has a yellowish tint to it, while Mars is red. Uh, Mars is currently very far away from us in its orbit around the Sun, but it will be getting closer over the next few months. Uh, towards the end of the year, it will be having another close approach to the Earth. Uh, and we will get to see Mars much better at that time. Uh, and Jupiter also will be moving into our evening skies as well. Well, that's a brief look at some of the interesting sights visible in our May skies this year. Next month uh, will be June, uh, the beginning of summer here in New Jersey. And we'll talk a little bit about the summer solstice and uh, how that impacts our night sky viewing. Uh, during this time of year, as well as some of the more obscure constellations uh, that are visible during the summer season. Till then, from all of us here at the New Jersey State Museum Planetarium, clear skies.